Hey everybody, thanks for coming back for part two of getting started with Red Hat's hyperconverged infrastructure. In part one, we stopped just before configuring the storage and deploying the appliance. Before we do that, we need to take care of two prerequisites, which are to ensure that we don't have any file systems or partitions on our target disks, and that we have pushed around some SSH keys for authentication. So let's take care of that. In the web UI, we'll navigate to the storage link, and here we can see all of our partitions and logical volumes and file systems. And I'll click on my destination drive, which is SDB. And you can see that I have a file system on here and two partitions. I don't want to delete the file system. I actually want to delete the partitions. So I'll click on Create Partition Table, select No Partition, and hit Format. After that, we need to push around the SSH keys. To do that, we need to have access to a terminal. And I've got a convenient little cheat sheet of commands that we need to run. First, we need to enable the repository where we can download the Rev Manager appliance. And then we need to create an SSH authentication key and copy it to each of the servers. You'll notice that I copy it first to the IP address of the storage network interface. And then later I'll copy it to the fully qualified domain name, which we use for the management interface. We need to have the fingerprint trusted for that interface as well. Okay, with the repository enabled and with the SSH keys trusted, we're ready to move on with the next part. We'll navigate back to the hosted engine dashboard and click on hyperconverged and we'll begin the Gluster wizard. The first bit of information we need to provide are the IP addresses of the storage network interfaces 192, 168, 255, 105 in my example. After we provide the storage interfaces, the next question is about the management interfaces and here I use the fully qualified domain names. Remember, both the storage interfaces and the management interfaces need to have their host keys trusted. The next questions are about what volumes we want to create for storage domains. I'm going to keep things simple, and so we'll remove the VM store and the data storage domains and keep only the engine. Step number four is to provide some information about the bricks that we will use to create the volumes. We can tell the system that these are RAID devices or if they're JBOT devices, and that will provide performance tuning optimizations automatically. And we need to make sure that we validate the device name is SDB because of our targeted hard drive, validate the size, and click Next. The review screen will show the entire script if you're interested in seeing the automation. And I'll speed through the deployment as it takes a few minutes to configure the firewall, configure the packages, and enable the services. When that's done, the next part is to provide information about our Rev Manager, which is also known as the hosted engine. We need to provide a fully qualified domain name and ensure that the records exist in DNS. So we'll click on the Validate button. I'm using static IP addressing. If you're using DHCP, please make sure that the MAC address shown here will receive a fixed address. Provide a root password and click Next. We also need to provide a password so that we can log into the application. Review the configuration settings and click prepare the virtual machine. And I'll speed through this part here as it takes a little bit of time to download about one and a half gigabytes of data for the Rev Manager appliance and configure things. Once the appliance has been downloaded and configured, we're presented with a summary storage screen. You can see that all of our systems are targeted here, which provides for the high availability. Finishing our deployment will take a few minutes as the virtual machine that we downloaded is copied into the new HA storage domain. And that's it. Now we can go ahead and log into our new Rev Manager appliance. It's important to note that we need to have a secure connection to the Rev Manager for certain operations to succeed, such as uploading disk images and ISO images through the GUI. So click on the CA certificate link and follow these steps to import the certificate into your Chrome browser. Go into Chrome's settings, locate your downloaded file, and trust this for identifying websites. The first time that we log into the Rev Manager, we need to create a network that will be used for storage replication. Click on the network link and click on New Network.
We're going to call this network Gluster and make a comment that it's used for storage replication. We're going to clear the box that says that virtual machines could connect directly to this network and then go into the Cluster tab and mark it as not required. Next, we'll navigate to our default cluster and tell it that this network is used for Gluster storage replication. Click into the default cluster, then click on Logical Networks and Manage the Networks. Scroll over to the side until you see Gluster Network Radio button and check it. With those steps complete, we simply need to connect our host to this new network. So we click on the Host tab and then click on our first host, click on Network Interfaces and set up the host networks. Do a drag and drop and put the logical network onto the physical network. And repeat this steps for the second and third hypervisors. With the logical network created and associated with the physical interfaces, we are done and ready to create our first virtual machines. I'll save that for the next video. I hope to see you again soon.